Yeah. Kadosh, Boker Or, day 26 in Bikim Balacha, right? Alacha Yud Aleph on the top, so it's page 77, right? In Bikim Balacha. We're talking about somebody that wants to hear Divre Torah from his friend or Shiur Torah from a Tabit Chacham, right? So therefore, if a person is going to come and wants to hear Divre Torah, whether it's from his friend or from a rabbi, he has to say Birkat Ha Torah. And he should say Pesukim Birkat Kohanim. And then afterwards, he can listen to Divre Torah according to all the opinions. Okay? She say it makes sense at the end of the day. Okay, so here in the footnote 72, he says, the response to the Chok Tanot discussed the issue, but the person needs to say Birkat Torah in order to listen to somebody else saying Torah. He ruled that a person who wishes uh, to listen must first say the Brachot or the Torah study, and only then may he listen. Based on the principle of Shomea Kaone, listening to Torah material is equal to speaking Torah material. For other, right, for, uh, for the same reason, we say that someone who listens to another person reciting Megillah Tester fulfills the mitzvah as if he, he recited it himself. This is true even according to the Agur, brought down in the Bet Yosef, who ruled that no blessing is necessary in order to think, right, about Torah thoughts. Thinking to yourself is not equal to speaking, but listening to someone else is equal to speaking. So, thinking yourself, no. But listening to someone else is speaking it. So that's actually a chidush. Right? That means basically that there's going to be a difference between listening to someone else right, and just uh, thinking it in your mind. The Rishon Etzion suggested several rules for this ruling, point out that according to Rabbi David uh, the Marsha and Sever Haradim, the Tamud social obligation to recite the Berachot is the Pasuk, Ki Shem Hashem Ekrav which means when I speak the words of the Torah, the listeners must bless Hashem. Accordingly, the original form of Torah study was for the blessings were instituted, was that people listened to Moshe Rabbeinu teaching the Torah. Meaning, how would they learn Torah? Moshe was speaking, right. and we were all listening. So if Moshe is speaking, we're all listening. So for that's a clear proof to the Chok Tanot. But according to Rashi's interpretation of the Pasuk, there's no proof. Right? He says, okay, it could be that maybe he doesn't argue, but there's other interpretations. What about an individual Torah study versus synagogue Torah reading? Regarding the mitzvah of Torah reading in the synagogue, the principle of the Shomea Kaone cannot be applied. But Rosh says that when someone is called up to Torah, he recites the blessings. He must read along silently together with the cantor. Otherwise, he's guilty of reciting a brachal of atala. He cannot rely, re rely upon the principle of Shomayak Yoneh. This is the ruling of the Shmuchar Aruch as well. So, right? he has to say it in a very low voice. Right? Low voice, though. Right? Because I heard... I heard... What? No. Yeah. Right? right? Not only that, it's very, very important that when you're going to do it, right, in a in a quiet voice, make sure that the Shriach Tzibur cannot hear you. Because if the Shriach Tzibur is going to hear you, it's going to be a problem. The Tureza Av and the Pri Chadash challenge this ruling, insisting that even if the person simply listens to the cantor reading the Torah, it should be su sufficient based on the principle of Shomea Keone. The Taz and the Pri Chadash say, Ma pitom? Ata ole la Torah, tishma, Shomea Keone. Lama ta tzrich lagid mashu? Remember, this halacha is only for the person that went up to the Torah. If I'm just listening to the Torah, why in the world am I going to say it? Why am I going to read along with him? If you want to do Shlai Mika Vechatagum, that's something else. It's not Shlai Mika Vechatagum. It's not Shlai Mika Vechatagum. It's not Shlai Mika Vechatagum. Right? You want to do Shlai Mika Vechatagum, that's not Shlai Mika Vechatagum. But it's not Shlai Mika Vechatagum. And it's not Shlai Mika Vechatagum. Why? Because if somebody else hears you, right, it's a problem. Right? It actually happened this morning in Shachri. There was somebody doing Pesquiz Zimra out loud. It was difficult. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't hear you. No, right? No, Why? No, because no, you're no, hearing no. somebody, you know, somebody doing it. It's very, very difficult. No, no. Doesn't matter. He says, in defense of the Shulchan Aruch, the Gaut Marsha suggestion, that the principle of Shomea Kione can be used only regarding a mitzvah that every individual must perform, whether he's alone or in a congregation. The mitzvah of the publicly reading the Torah and the Bet Knesset is unique because it's not performed by an individual. It's performed, that means it's not a chuba on the gavra. It's a chuvat tzibur. It's a difference. There's an obligation on tzibur, not a chuvat on the individual. Instead of specific number of people in each congregation are chosen to perform it. The form of the mitzvah is for each person the chosen to perform it himself. He cannot simply just listen to the, the person, right, just like the rest of the congregation, despite the principle of Shomer Kohanet. Matei Yudah and Rav Vichida added, right, explaining that originally there was no official cantor who chanted the Torah portion for those who were called up. Each person did it on himself. And this mitzvah does not allow for the principle of Shomer Kohanet. Rishon Letzion then recited the Zikana Aron, 
who ruled that the principle of Shomea Keone can be applied to mitzvot like Kaddish and Kedusha, but it does not allow somebody to say Beracha or Mitzvah while performing the act of the Mitzvah. For example, if someone wants to listen to another person saying Megillat Esther, he cannot say the Beracha and then listen. Only the person saying it can say the Berachot. In the same way, it's impossible for someone to say the Beracha of the Torah and then simply just listen to the Chazan, to the Bal Koreh. Apparently, the Zikana Aron did not agree with the ruling of the Chok Tanot, what we said before. Now, Shlomo Kluger suggested that the question discussed by the Chok Tanot touches upon the debate between Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam in Sukkah. If someone's in the middle of the silent Amidah and he hears somebody and he hears the, the, the Tzibur saying Kaddish or Kedusha, what's he supposed to do? According to Rashi, he listens to the Chazan and he's going to be Yitzhak al Chuvah. Yeah, Shomia Kione. According to Rabbeinu Tam, it doesn't help. Okay, so therefore he comes and he says, According to Rabbeinu Tam, it's, it's only if he actually verbalized the words and it helps. Apparently Rabbeinu Tam would say that a person must say the Berachot of the Torah just for listening to the Torah. The Shulchan Aruch uh, Paskin is like Rashi. Shulchan Aruch Paskin, that you keep quiet and you listen to the Chazan. That's why the Chazan has to know Halakha. Why does he have to know Halakha? Because for example, if I'm in the quiet Amida and I'm listening to the Chazan and I can't hear the Chazan say it. Why? Because Kadosh, 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 everybody's screaming. So what do I hear? I hear the end. Where I hear Lumatam Shabbat I didn't hear Kadosh Kadosh Kadosh. I need to hear the Chazan, and the Chazan has to have anybody in mind. They're going to be Yitzel Chuvah with their, with the, with the Kadosh Kadosh Kadosh, Brokhut Hashem, Imloch, Bechulu Bechulu. Whether it's going to be the Kaddish or Kiddusha also as well. Okay, and that's what's brought down in Shulchan Aruch. Maran and the Shonat Zion rejected this comparison. He insisted that the blessings are necessary even according to Rashi. The person who hears Kaddish while in the middle of Amidah is in a unique position. Regarding his obligation to respond to Kaddish, Allah says, as if he actually counted as if he said it. But regarding the prohibition of interrupting his prayers, the Allah views him as that someone did not interrupt, which is like a, a contradictory. Meaning, He didn't do a second in his Amidah. But mitzad the, mitzad the, the answering, it's kilu he answered. Kilu ana, kadish o kadusha. You understand? Which is like, without actually speaking, which is an incredible concept, you understand? Meaning, to do with the interrupt, he didn't interrupt, but he did answer. You understand? Which is something incredible. So he says, okay, why? Because it's machshavat tova mitzadef la maaseh, meaning that a good thought of a human being, of course, who puts it as a maaseh. So therefore, that's why he's actually coming and he's doing that. But he says, but you can't do that for everything. The Zuchul Avraham, citing the Levush's uh, ruling that it's permissible to think in Torah subject before reciting the Berachot, since no blessing was ever instituted for mitzvah full by thinking, he inferred from here that the same thing would apply to Torah lesson, since the listener is entirely passive. But the Rishon Sion doesn't like that as well, because of Shomiyah Keone. Okay, so in practice, let's see what does it say. The Sdeh Hemed concurred with the Levush that it's permissible to think about Torah subjects before saying the Berachot, that of Chida likewise ruled that no one may, say, may recite the blessings over the Torah, just in order to listen. So you've been told, the Sharet Shuvah and the Benishchai rule, that it's forbidden to listen before saying the Berikat to Torah and saying the Pesukim. And then by saying the Pesukim, you're good according to everybody. And that's what the Rishon Tzion also rules. Before listening to a lesson, say the Berikat to Torah, say, say the Berikat Kohanim, and then you've done all the opinions. Because the second that you do the Berikat to Torah and the Berikat Kohanim, it's a Kvar Maspein. If you do the Berikat to Torah and the Berikat Kohanim, it's a problem. Because that means what's going to happen is, is that according to a lot of shitot, you're only listening to a shiur now, you weren't chayav. So if you have to do bikat Torah and, uh, and uh, bikat koanim, now you've done your obligation, and now listen to the shiur. Okay? Intentions, right, while when listening to a Torah lesson, by the way, right, that which everything that I brought down was the shitav of Uvadia. Maybe Shalom Esa says that the minhag in Morocco was to was not like the Zora Kadosh was actually to be Mekel, that Shomea Keone, because there's two answers in the Bet Yosef, there's this, there's that, it's a whole thing. And therefore there was a minhag to even call up an Amaretz, even though you knew that the Amaretz was not going to read along with you. That was a Minhag of Morocco. Right? And he says he's it's based upon a Bet Yosef, it's based upon this, but that, and it's based upon the Yesod of Shomea Keone. And therefore, even though you're going to call up a guy and you know for a hundred percent that this guy is not going to read along with you. There's still no problem. Okay? You don't have to read it. Yeah, there was a lot of those. Uh, many people, even until today, people don't know how to read it. Fine. Intentions when listening to a Torah lesson. The Rishon Etzion comes and he says that a person delivering the Torah lesson does not need to have a specific intention, right, for his listeners to fill mitzvah of Torah study. Nor does the listener need to have the intention that they're going to be Yisrael The Gemara says from Shomea Keone, from the Pasuk Yoshiau, 
right, was coming and, and reading the Torah scroll, the Torah proves that Yoshiao did not read it himself. Rather, Shafan read it to him. And in that case, Shafan did not intend to have the full his obligation, the king did not have it, meaning they didn't have to have Kavanot, each one to be to the Chuvah. Okay, listening to a recorded lesson. One way to interpret the previous paragraph is that the mitzvah of Torah study is unique amongst the verbal mitzvot. Although people can fulfill other mitzvot through the principle of Shomer Keone, only if both the speaker and listener are intent and able to prove the principle. That is unnecessary for the mitzvah of Torah study. The essential form of Torah study is for one party to speak to another and for the other one to listen. Both parties fulfill the mitzvah independent of one another. We do not view as if the speaker performs a mitzvah on behalf of the listener. It is possible that this is what the Chachamim say in Avot, that the Torah is acquired through listening. So to admit it, you acquire the Torah through listening. So alternatively, it's possible that Shomei Akeone applies to the mitzvah of Torah study as well. Whenever someone teaches Torah to others, he automatically intends for them to fill the mitzvah, and therefore the listeners automatically mean to fill the mitzvah as well. Suppose someone is listening to a recorded lesson, right, on an electronic device. According to the first interpretation, the listener fulfills the mitzvah of the Torah study as well because he doesn't have, right, as um, since he does not have the intent, need the intention of the speaker. According to the second interpretation, it's possible that he does not fulfill the mitzvah because there's no speaker. It was, it was on a recording. Except for maybe there's no speaker. But Shlomo Zaman Orbach ruled that it is necessary to say the berachot, the blessings, before listening to someone else teaching the words of Torah, but it's unclear whether one must say the berachot to listen to a recorded Torah lesson. The classic form of Torah study was that he has a teacher not the recorded lesson. Apparently, according to Rav Orbach, people can fulfill the mitzvah of Torah study through listening to someone teaching Torah without using the concept of Shomei Akeone. This is definitely his position regarding a case of someone that's listening to a live lecture. And it might be that Lachaz, even if someone's listening to a recording. According to those who do not consider a voice heard over a loudspeaker and the loud voice, live voice, the same that would apply also because loudspeaker maybe is not the live voice. Do you know there's big machlokot on that, on live speaker, meaning like on a microphone. Is that considered by a method you're listening or not? Right? Some people have a minhag, right, by weddings, that they won't use a microphone. And they have to have yeah, 10 well. people, as I just said, because they have to have 10 people around them that are listening. Oh. Because they hold that listening over a microphone is not considered listening. Like just like a Megillah. If I, uh, if I come in and use a microphone, and you're listening through a microphone, you don't use the Chubah. But if you're close enough that you could hear me without the microphone, then, then yes. People. But no, because you need 10 people for Bikata Khatani. At any rate, he comes and he says, we must, uh, we must make sure to say the Bracha before listening to Torah lesson in any form. After saying it, you do Bikata Khatanim, and then you've got out of all any problems whatsoever. Fine. Teaching Torah to secular Jews. Okay, very, very important. Teaching Torah to secular Jews. In almost every community, Secular Jews are invited to join Torah study groups or Torah, le Torah lectures. This presents a problem since secular Jews do not make Bikat Torah and they don't do any Brachot. So now when you invite them, the teachers like Over on Ifnei Velot, they Mishon. Why? Because they didn't do Bikat Torah. So one possible rationale is to say that whenever someone teaches Torah to others, he's automatically right, employing the principle Shomer Keone, and therefore, right, when teaching Torah secular Jews who have not said the Brachot, he does not need to imply the principle of Shomei and that's the listeners would not be guilty of reciting it. Although the listeners fulfill the mitzvah thinking about Torah, but it's not necessary for them to say the berachot of Birkat Torah. According to the, the, to the hypothesis forwarded by Rav Shomazam and Orbach, however, it's still a problem. He suggested that the classic form of Torah study is one person speaking and others listening, and both parties fulfill the mitzvah of Shomei If so, it should be forbidden to teach Torah to somebody that didn't say Birkat Torah. So a stronger basis to permit this practice to say that the secular Jews is like someone who, for whatever reason, cannot recite the berachot of the Torah, right? Above in Halakha 4, it was explained that in such a case, the, right, the person may still go ahead and study Torah, although he was not reciting the beracha. Since the secular Jew is unaware of the necessity to recite the beracha, he's like someone who does not know the text of the beracha. In either case, the, fa the fact that he does not say the beracha does not prevent him from learning Torah. You remember we learned this yesterday. That means basically what happens to the person for whatever reason he wasn't able to say Bikata Torah. Let's say he didn't know it, whatever, he didn't have phonetics, he didn't have this, he wasn't able to say it. What? No, okay, fine. No, yeah? He doesn't know how to say Bikata Torah. So he comes and he says, but he's he's still gonna learn. Okay. Some contemporary scholars, right, contend. That while it's technically forbidden to study Torah, if one does not say the brachot, 
in the case of a secular Jew, it's better that they transgress the prohibition in the hope that maybe they're going to come closer to Torah. Mm -hmm. Meaning instead of coming and start telling them now, start making berachot, start doing this, start doing that, da, 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 da. no, 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 no. Yeah, you know, this is, uh, you know, fine. Rav Yitzchak Zilberstein cited, right, his uh, father-in-law, Rav Yashiv, ruling that it's permissible, right, to teach Torah to secular Jews because they have no intention of fulfilling the mitzvah Torah study, although they attend a class. To them, it's not a fulfillment of mitzvah, it's simply entertaining themselves through listening to the ancient wisdom. And the Minchat Asher refuted this logic, however, right, and uh, this issue is likewise in full in the Hilchata Noraita. So basically, there's a big machlok, meaning that well, they're coming for the show. Yeah, so they're coming, they're enjoying, they're this, they're that, you know, like, uh, so you know, that's what it is. But they're not doing it because of any other reason. 